Anacapa Island, one of the Channel Islands, just 11 miles off the coast of Southern California. Comprised of three islets, Anacapa's steep cliffs, vegetated terrain, and protected beaches provide safe haven for a variety of marine mammals and seabirds. Anacapa is part of the Channel Islands National Park and lies within a marine sanctuary. You go out to Anacapa Island and you're really in a world apart where you see seabirds and marine mammals and just a wilderness experience that you can't find here on the mainland any longer. Anacapa became part of Channel Islands National Park in the 1980s. We knew the history of this island. We knew it had been an important place for seabirds. So we're trying to protect that for future generations. Protecting Anacapa includes keeping the island free of invasive predators found on the mainland. But during the 80s and 90s, resource managers noticed a steady decline in the population of some species of seabirds on Anacapa. One of the primary reasons predation by the non-native black rat. This is the black rat or the ship rat. We caught him in a, in a building here on the island. After feeding on a summer of seabirds and eggs, he's uh, now looking, looking for more food. There's no more seabirds on the island, so now he's looking far and wide for some of the food that he's used to. In this infrared footage, a rat is seen attacking decoy eggs placed in a nesting site on Anacapa. The eggs are similar in size and appearance to native seabird eggs. I mean, the rats affected everything here. They affected the gulls, they affected the merlets, they affected the mice, they affected the lizards, they affected the vegetation. The rats prey heavily on a rare nocturnal seabird named the Scripps's merlet. There are four primary breeding islands in the world for these seabirds, and Anacapa is one of them. In the 1990s, estimates indicated there were only 1,500 breeding pairs in all of the Channel Islands, with several hundred of them nesting in the cliffs and caves of Anacapa. This is a, an egg that's been eaten by a rat that we found in one of the sea caves at Anacapa Island. You can see the serrated edge with big, big bite marks where the rats come along and chomped it. This one was really fresh and the rat got it right after it was laid. It was discouraging because everything we found was broken eggshells. You go into a refuge cave and you find the egg. Next time you go there, the egg is broken. There's no bird. Broken eggshell. It is unclear exactly how the rats found their way onto Anacapa. We don't know exactly when they came out here. Probably came in the late 1800s, perhaps on a shipwreck that occurred north of the island. Or perhaps they came when the Coast Guard was building the lighthouse and the associated structures on Anacapa. Rats are found on 90% of the world's islands. Estimates indicate that half of the bird and reptile extinctions in the world are due to predation by rats. It was really important that we brought back this potential habitat here on Anacapa Island, and we provided that and allowed, once again, for merlets to be able to nest here. Given the chronic threat to the seabird populations on Anacapa, a group of government, university, and nonprofit organizations partnered together in the late 90s to rid the island of the black rat and document the subsequent restoration. The removal of invasive species from islands is a very uh, important and a critical conservation tool. And since the 1980s, there's been roughly about 400 rat eradications worldwide. The project was funded using settlement funds from the 1990 American Trader oil spill in Huntington Beach, the largest oil spill in Southern California in the last few decades. The American Trader Trustee Council oversees a restoration fund, and it's a really unique program in, um, in that the polluter is you know, responsible for paying for these restoration projects and compensating the public for the damages to the natural resources that they cause. But given that a single pair of rats can theoretically produce over 5,000 offspring in just one year, 
it was clear removing them from the island would be a significant challenge. The cliffs of Anacapa represented the most daunting challenges, and then compounded by the fact that not only are there rats on the island, but there's this native endemic mouse, endemic to the, to the islands of Anacapa. So we spent four years designing a program that would have the maximum likelihood of eliminating every last rat while still conserving the other native species that are unique to Anacapa Island. The team developed a strategy based on an innovative technique that had been pioneered in New Zealand, using helicopters to distribute a specially formulated rodenticide. This was the first time an application procedure like this would take place in North America. I lost sleep. I certainly lost sleep at times because we conducted a, a new and novel technique to us in North America here, but basically adopting technology and techniques that uh, others overseas, particularly in New Zealand, had been using for a number of years. One of the primary concerns of the team was how to minimize the impact of the rodenticide on the island ecosystem, starting with the native deer mice. We want to know what, how the mice are functioning as a population before the bait drop, because they'll be affected by the same bait as the rats are. As insurance, native mice were held in a protected shed until the rodenticide application was finished. The mice were then released the following spring, when food resources were more abundant on the island. Other precautions included capturing and removing the birds of prey that frequented the island before and after the bait was dropped. In some cases, using a great horned owl to flush the raptors out. We were attempting to capture all the, all the birds of prey, especially the species of special concern, and the ones that are most likely to uh, feed on carrion uh, that has, uh, has some of the poison bait in it. Finally, after years of preparation, on a cool, clear December day in 2001, the bait was loaded onto the island and the application began. I remember an early morning start. The helicopter scheduled today at seven o'clock. And then the helicopter, you can hear the helicopter coming in from behind. Everybody was in position. We loaded the, the first hopper load or the first bait bucket load of bait. And I remember standing on the, uh, on the landing zone looking at our pilot and basically giving him the thumbs up, you can go, and him lifting off, and then he started to spread bait. The team also applied additional bait by hand along cliffs and the shoreline, taking extra precautions to get the pellets into the areas where rats were known to forage. The implementation of, of uh, the rat eradication from, from Anacapa took two years to prepare for, and it took about two weeks to actually implement that project. And then the waiting started. For several weeks after the application, the team carefully monitored bait intake and the activity of radio-collared rats. It appears most of the rats took the bait and died in their burrows. Though some raptors and songbirds were lost to the rodenticide, within six months, peregrine falcons reappeared on the island. There were also indications the winter survivorship of the native side blotch lizards had significantly increased since the eradication. We started monitoring the side blotch lizards and we saw a great survivorship of the juvenile side blotched, higher than what it had been when rats were on the island. That's incredible information. Before that, we did not understand that rats were having that kind of impact on the native reptiles and amphibians on Anacapa Island. During the spring of 2002, the captive deer mice were released back onto the island. Within months, they reproduce and start steadily moving towards their original population levels. These are the first generation from the captive mice that were released back in April and they seem to be doing really well. Ten years after the initial eradication, the benefit of removing rats from the island becomes increasingly evident. The deer mouse populations for this Anacapa subspecies has gone up as a direct result of the rat eradication. 
tag this mouse. There we go, perfect. It's only been 10 years since we implemented Anacapa. In ecological time, it's just a drop in the bucket. But the changes were documented or have been documented on the island are incredible. The seabirds are recovering. They're expanding outside of the sea caves. We're seeing them recolonize areas where they were never thought to be nesting when the rats were, were present. And to see new species come to the island, discovering actually storm petrels nests on the island, cast and sockets on the island. And it told us that these birds are ready, willing, and able to utilize these islands, but they just don't have the habitat to do it in. As for the Scripps's Marillets, researchers are now finding more productive nesting sites with eggs intact in areas that had a history of predation. This is one of our historic monitoring sites. This is site one, and there's an adult sitting in the site. Biologists are finding that since the eradication, the hatching success of Scripps's Marillets has increased from 30% to 85%. What we're seeing here at Anacapa Island, 10 years uh, post rat eradication, is a highly significant increase in hatching success, and nesting density, or the number of breeding pairs, has also increased. It's a site that's been active. When you look at areas like this at Landing Cove and other areas on the island that aren't in the sea caves, the growth rates in this area are upwards of 25% per annum. For a seabird, that's, it's unheard of. Resource managers now focus on removing invasive plants and replacing them with native plants that grow on the island to help create better nesting habitat for seabirds. So now that the rats are gone, it really opens up a lot of opportunities for us for ecological restoration island-wide. We still have to make sure that the habitat is here on the islands and that the vegetation uh, is suitable and that we, don't, that we have soil that these birds can nest in. Beyond restoration on individual islands, resource managers must continue to respond to the ongoing natural and human factors that impact marine environments throughout the world. We still have to make sure that there's enough food in the ocean for these seabirds to feed on. We're looking at things like climate change and ocean acidification. So there will be continuous challenges. Still, the legacy of this project is that there are strategic steps resource managers can take to catalyze ecological restoration. It's just really satisfying to see the seabirds coming back to the island and, and to see that the funds were, were directed in the most effective way they could be to really bring about substantial change. I'm excited that Anacapa is part of the conservation history internationally. Being able to, to look at islands and identify conservation challenges and, and come up with strategies that will meet the needs of each of these different island ecosystems. I was recently on Anacapa and it's like, wow, we had an impact, a positive impact on this ecosystem here in Southern California and it's paying dividends. The island is paying dividends and it's gonna continue paying dividends for future generations. I can't wait for my grandkids to have the opportunity to visit Anacapa.